Thank you very much. Um, I open the discussion to the floor, uh, and I'm wondering if there are any questions from the floor. Yes. Could you, could you say your name? Yes. Profession um, and country. Arnaud Fauconnier from France. Um, um, Peter Dietz uh, made a good talk about confounder for, um, but you didn't uh, tell anything about emptying or filling bladder or rectal. In our experience with MRI, we had many problems with filling and emptying bladder or rectum, and we, we found it was a great confounder for pushing yeah. and having great image. What is your yeah. opinion, please? Arnaud, thanks very much for pointing that out. That was an omission of mine. On principle, we do our imaging after bladder emptying, and if there is a significant residual, we actually catheterize it. That's essential. That's a ver thanks very much for making that point. Virtually everything I've shown you ought to be done after bladder emptying, because a full bladder will impede the full development of a prolapse. The same goes for a full rectum. It's just that that's much harder to deal with. And occasionally, we actually send people home, ask them to come back once they've had a decent motion. Other practitioners have used Microlax enemas to get people to go to the loo before they do imaging. It's a very, very good point. Thank you very much. Okay. Next question. Yes. <clears throat> My name is Pedro Araño, urologist from Barcelona. This is a question for Dr. Elke. Um, I understood that your studies of, uh, about bladder wall thickness was in patients with the drusor overactivity or overactive bladder. I mean, do you have information, uh, studies about bladder wall thickness in patients with overactive bladder syndrome with and without the drusor overactivity? Well, this is actually a very good question, and I asked the same question when we wrote this article I was, I was advertising at the very end. So there is a strict correlation between bladder wall thickness and detrusor overactivity, detrusor overactivity incontinence. This is one part. But there's also a direct correlation between bladder wall thickness and overactive bladder. However, there is no study that has confirmed uh, that the overactive bladder is associated with the chooser overactivity, therefore the bladder wall thickness is, 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 is enlarged. There's no study like this, but only studies bladder wall thickness OEB, bladder wall thickness, the chooser overactivity. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm Dr. Stone from South Korea. Uh, I have a question to Dr. OK. Uh, it's very nice to see you again here, Barcelona. And uh, I uh, I do ultrasonography detrusor uh, water sickness measurement in every my BPH patient uh, after inference of Dr. Orkes' um, lots of study. Uh, today I'm going to do uh, have the interest in females uh, detrusor wall thickness. However, I want to ask uh, what I has the uh, problem is uh, it's quite different in major. It, uh, blood water thickness practically uh, because I trained well my uh, one of my fellow uh, he, he do it very well however uh, another person uh, is has very difficulties in that so what I want to ask you is uh, how did you standardize the, uh, the your study, in, especially in multi-center study. In, we, when you do multi-center study, every, uh, every investigator have same protocol and same technique and, and, and also well, uh, well trained in same method. So that's my question. Of, of course, this is, a, this is a brilliant question. And we have to clarify for the audience. We are not talking about male patients with a suspicion of bladder outlet obstruction. So these are completely different patients. We have been talking here for female patients with the chooser overactivity, chooser overactivity incontinence. So what I've proposed in my studies to do the super pubic ultrasound technique in, in males. The simple explanation is uh, males don't like to have a probe in their rectum. So it's very inconvenient. Women don't either. <laughs> Women don't either. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, uh, but we cannot apply the transvaginal technique, obviously. So we do it in a superpubic technique. And the difference is that when you have an empty bladder and you, you want to scan the bladder with a superpubic ultrasound, you cannot see the bladder. So you have to fill the bladder to a certain volume. And when you have the same investigation that Vicula did with the transvaginal technique, so you measure bladder wall thickness, the tuser wall thickness with uh, different bladder filling volumes, you will show that there's a decrease of bladder filling mm -hmm. until 250 ml, and then it's, it's rather stable until the maximum bladder filling. So we propose to measure in the second part of the bladder filling phase, so more than 250 ml. This is the general difference. So what about the learning curve? The learning curve uh, with your technique, I think this is a couple of measurements. It took me like two or three measurements to have this technique. It took me about 10 measurements to have the super pubic technique. I would like to propose, just you know the technique, you try it, and you will see very quickly that it's very easy. And when you compare my measurement to the other measurement, it takes two or three measurements, and we are completely identical. So it's, it's rather quick mm -hmm. that we have the same values. Yeah. And, and it is interesting. For the shrink study, there was actually a training video as well. So, um, and, and I, I must admit, it's something which we should ask the people who organized that study, whether that could be made available on the Internet. Mm -hmm. Because it's a pity that they went through all that... Uh, process of training many it was, it was a huge number of centers and it should really be available to everybody oh, okay training video um, will be very good for uh, uh, other investigators so I will ask you to get how to get it okay thank you very much thank you uh, I, I, I'm sorry we're, we're, we're actually over time now and uh, I'm sure you will want to get to lunch but I'd like to really thank our speakers for s some excellent uh, talks and thank you Thank you.